From the American Riviera in Santa Barbara, California, it's Ken Boxer Live with your host, Ken Boxer, and co-host, two-time Olympian Ty Babylonia. Please welcome Ken and Ty. Thank you so very much. And, and thank you for watching. I'm Ken Boxer. And this is Ken Boxer Live. And this part of the show, I always introduce my lovely and very talented co host, the two time Olympian, five time national champion, as well as a world champion, the figure skater, Ty Babylonia. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. Thank you. All right. You were in a play yeah. this last weekend. Well, yes, I was. Uh, my partner, Randy Gardner, is doing a one-man show about his life, and... And you were in it. And, and yes, because I'm involved. You know, we've been together for 46 years, and it's, it's um, I mean, there were, there were things I learned, you know, that I didn't know. So I it, it's love very the show. Yeah, it's cathartic. It's going on for, like, the, the next two and a half weeks, I think. So it's, and then I'm it's so going proud on the of road, him. Right? It's going on and the road. possibly on the road, absolutely. Well, good luck with that. So tell proud Randy. of Randy. Okay, well, tell yes. us, tell our audience, who is on our oh show? Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. Finally, I get to meet him and, and now interviewing him. Um, producer, engineer of one of the largest selling albums ever in the history. Um, producer Ken Calais is with us tonight and I, I can't wait to meet him, so. Don't go away. We'll be right back with Ken Calais. All right. Yes. <laughs> Ken Boxer Live is brought to you in part by Harborview Inn. Welcome to Santa Barbara's premier four diamond luxury boutique oceanfront hotel. American Riviera Bank. Smart banking for smart people. And by the Eagle Inn, a family owned hotel near the beach in Santa Barbara. Now back to Ken Boxer Live. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we are back. Joining us this evening is the very talented recording engineer, producer, and author, Ken Calais. Many of you will know Ken from his producing the Grammy Award winning Fleetwood Mac Rumors album. In fact, he wrote a very successful book about his firsthand experience producing the Rumors album simply called Making Rumors. Now he's also the father of the very popular singer-songwriter Colby Calais. So let's now welcome everybody's favorite record producer, the Grammy Award winner, Ken Calais. Welcome to our yeah. show. Welcome. Yeah. welcome. Yeah. So delighted to have you here. Thank you, sweetheart. Here. Okay. Yay. I did some research and you started or you were going to be a lawyer. And all of a sudden, oh, now, here you are as the successful producer. How, how I was going to be happen? a lawyer. I grew up in San Jose. I couldn't figure out what, what I wanted to do. My parents said, why don't you be a lawyer? I went, okay. So, and then <laughs> I, I, I got a job. As I decided, okay, just to make sure this is a good idea. I got a job as, in a law office as being an intern, and I hated it. I just literally hated it. And I said, I made an immediate left turn. Oh, so when you were you going to law school at the time, I or was just you said you I was going to University of Santa Clara, and okay. pre-law, and then I got the uh, intern idea, and then literally I ran out. I ran out as fast as I could. <laughs> <laughs> Bunch of lying, lying scumbags. Which reminds me, I want. I have <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> did I say that out loud? <laughs> Prior to that, now, okay. what other jobs did you hold? What other job? You're an intern now that we know in as a law firm, but. Go back to high school. Go back to. Uh, you uh, know, I, I I was always self-employed. I started I started a, uh, uh, you know, this cassette, uh, four-track cassette. I made a started a company to make four and eight-track cassettes, and then I had these machines that sitting at home. And I, after I learned to play the guitar, I thought, why don't I turn these machines into recording me? And so I had another guy I was with, and we we started recording. And then I decided that uh, I would get a job in a recording studio up in Northern California, and I went to a couple students and they were just atrocious. Mm -hmm. So I decided, well, I'll move to LA and get a job at one of the big record companies and, and, and record my music at night and uh, on the weekends, and I'd become a huge star, and that would be the end of that. But that's not the way it went. <laughs> no. <laughs> I got the job at Wally Hyder Studios in LA, in Hollywood, and uh, 
the first session I worked on was Crosby, Stills, and Nash. So, and I, and I watched this Crosby, Stills, and Nash working, and it was like, I am nothing. I am worse than nothing, you know. <laughs> Wait, so, what, year, what, what year was this? 71. Okay, okay. What album was that with the Crosby, Stills, and Nash? It was uh, Crosby, Nash. Okay. Okay. Um, there was a, a solo. Okay, so how did you overcome that obstacle thinking that you're inferior in that room? Well, I was inferior, but I loved the console. I loved all the, the dial switches and knobs. So I just went over there and I started learning to mu uh, make music on the console, which everybody said, hey, I like that. You know, so, so you taught yourself? Yeah, well, that's pretty and, much. And, and you know, during back, back, back at that time, they would, they would bring you on, and I would be an assistant for an another engineer. And I was, I was a firecracker. I was about 24, 26. And I just w I sucked up everything. I learned everything about it. And took notes and. Is that so. the way most people become a producer, a record producer, a record engineer? There's no back, real schooling. Back, back then, no. There's oh, there's schools now, but they're all pretty bad. Okay. So you know, it's 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 mainly about how do you deal with a musician. These schools, they put people out, and they the this, this, the uh, engineer might come up to Elton John and say. Thanks, great. Can I get your autograph? No, no, you, you have to be so cool. Like, no, Elton, you're bothering me. Well, how do you yeah. know? I've always wanted to know this. How do you know in your job as a record producer, engineer, that it is finished? That the, the job that you've done is complete? No more is necessary to question. complete this. It's just, this is it. How do you know? And is it up to you? Or are there, you know, it's the band members also? Not necessarily up to me, but, but oftentimes it is. Back with Fleetwood Mac, it wasn't necessarily up to me. But, mm -hmm. you know, typically when I run out of tracks and I can't think of anything more, I really add too much stuff in there. Then I kind of, I make like a, today I make like a, a booyah bass or something, you know. But my music is all mm -hmm. these ingredients, and then I bring certain things out, and they pop out in, in, the, in the music, and it's kind of ear candy, acoustic ear candy. So well, who has the final say? Sorry, who has the final, like with rumors? Well, with rumors, it was everybody, the, the whole band. Right. And, you know, it, it was kind right. of a group group. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, but you guys did it right. Well, here's <laughs> exactly. Jeez. But the artist always has the final say, unless I can read. Am I right? Is that your rule, or is that the general rule well, in, I, us, in the industry? If they're not happy, I, you know. I mean, unless it's something. But specific. do they listen to you, or do you listen to them primarily? Is Both. It it's well. mutual. Really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you know, my, if I was making a record with you, I'd want I'd want to try to bring every bit of creativity out of you, and mm -hmm. and then and tell you you're like doing cartwheels, right? And then when you're doing cartwheels and you hit the ceiling, then I'm thinking, okay, I think we're we're good. But, but what if it's my first album and I really don't? Yeah, I don't know your business. So would well, you take me by the hand and guide me through it? Sure. Completely? Okay. Because we do that a lot. There's a lot of young artists who, who are just not sure where they want to be, and you know it's my job to, to bring them out and find find a, a, the I always call it the heartbeat of the song. You've got to okay. find the heartbeat of the song and then and then build upon that. And you can put all kinds of you know baloney candy in there and you know distractions, but you if it's not a heartbeat, it, you know. Well, let's right. watch. There's a video that we have of the making. I th or actually, it's not necessarily the making, but it's with Fleetwood Mac, and you're working in, in uh, as an engineer in the studio. And for the Tusk. I think on Tusk. For yeah. the Tusk. Okay, Definitely. let's let's watch. Okay. Okay. Let's Ken Calle. Let's go. 
yes. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Ken Boxer, our guest, Ken Calais. Ty? I love that footage. Okay, after rumors, mega, massive, huge success, what was the pressure like to go back into the studio um, and record Tusk? Was there pressure from the label? No, to no. Kinda t I mean, how can you top that? The, the label was doing cartwheels. They figured, you know what, uh, I mean, my, at that time, 15 million records, they figured at mm -hmm. least 15 million people are going to go buy the next one. So right. they're just thrilled. I guess it's a sure, surefire deal. But, but did they want that same formula, the same rumors? Because you, you guys went in a whole different... We were heroes to them. They didn't care. So we <laughs> oh, interesting. We went back in the studio. I personally went back in the studio attempting to make rumors, too. But right. Lindsey Buckingham had another idea. Or actually, he didn't have really an idea. All he knew, <laughs> <laughs> all he knew is he didn't want to do the same thing again because he thought people who, who right. did the same thing were, were kind of taking the easy route. So he comes in the first day. Well, I used to do this routine where I would get the, I would EQ, put bass in trouble, and w work on his guitars to get it sounding perfect. Mm -hmm. And he'd say, and we'd get it perfect, and then we'd record. This one day, he, he came in and he said, okay, do you like it? You're, and I said, yeah, it's really great. He said, okay, turn all the knobs 180 degrees. So mm -hmm. I went like some this to it. And I said, I can't, what is that? And he says, no, let's just record like that. So. I said, I said, what does that mean? I, do you want to go with, now there's no treble, so you're trying to tell me you want to make this record more bottom end? He goes, uh, yeah, okay, let's do that. Oh my goodness. So it was like. It was still a great album though. I oh, love Tusk. And, and we, yeah. so we, we kind of sculpted the whole thing to be, have the emphasis on the bottom, which right. low, you know, low bottom end, warm, warm, rich tones in the bottom. But the next day to show where he was at, you know, he, he came into the studio and he had, he had this big afro, right? Right. And he had, and, and he had cut it all off, and it was just this crazy hair. And he had, <laughs> it came, he came in, and, and his Levi's had cuts in him. He literally lost it in the shower and decided that he was not <laughs> worth something, and, and uh -oh. just cut chopped all everything. His, chopped everything. So. Yeah. Well, I love I love Tusk, but then I have another. I have the two part. Um, Silver Springs, one of my all time favorite Fleetwood Mac Me songs. Too. Um, it didn't appear on the Rumors album because... No room. No room. And whose decision was that? Everybody's. And who broke it to Stevie that... Me. Oh, uh, and how was that? that? Like? Oh, yeah. that was a lot of fun. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> it's, oh my gosh. It, it made it's it particularly more hard because she had made a magnificent gesture to, and gave her mother the, the publishing to Silver Springs, oh and thi goodness. thinking that was going to be an annuity that, that you know, right. her mom could make money all her life, right. and, you right. know, right. and so what do we do? Pull it off the record, you know. So, oh, uh, so I, you know. Well, I want to know though, rumors were so successful. Tell us, was there any other cuts that were made that you know about that the world doesn't know that you still have in your drawer, desk no. drawer somewhere? <laughs> We, you know, I did the greatest hits record in the 1990s, and and I, I went through everything. I went through outtakes, mm -hmm. everywhere looking for it, and we couldn't find anything. Well, how did you know? You knew from the beginning it was going to become a Grammy Award winner. Not at all. I, I read that so I thought you. No, I had no you, idea. Really? Did anyone? No, no. I mean, there was so much drama. We all know, you know, the stories because everyone's so open about what, the drugs and the drinking and the the relationships. But look you what know, came out of that. It, it was funny. Uh, the, the first, I have some outtakes I was going to play them for you guys, but, mm -hmm. but there's some, some of the songs when they were early on, they mm -hmm. really, I couldn't tell if they were horrible or really? pathetic. You know. <laughs> and <laughs> throughout, throughout the year, we worked on the record the, uh, about 12 months. And mm -hmm. throughout the year, we kept making minor adjustments. And I always tell people that, you know, maybe that's the problem with the record company, the record business today, is people like, uh, Stevie, last time I talked to Stevie, she said, you know, I only have, they, the record company gave me 13 days to in the studio. And we had 365 days. We could have had 720. Oh my gosh. So, you know, something about, if you don't get it right the first time, keep going. Right. And so we just kept taking pieces of the song out and, and trying a different, a different instrument, a different color, a different feel, and until we got it right. And, and we kept polishing this music. You had that polishing. luxury. But can you still... Are you critical and enjoy music 
when you're like when you're watching that video, for instance, are you thinking anything? I'm wondering like, what's going in your mind. Anything that you'd say, ah, oh, you got to do something different. That's we got to change that. You see, at this point now, years no. later, do you look and go, God, I've got to change something. I'm no, not. I mean I think everything is great. I think we we worked on it really hard and we made compromises. And I trouble is I can't listen to that record Why? without Why? because I can I can see you know one day the tape broke and one day this happened and this happened. So I can't sit there and just enjoy it. I see all these little. Well, 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 what about in general? <laughs> well, but what about though in general when you go to a concert or listen to music? We were just talking. You, we were he just that? saw Fleet with Mac live. So are you are you Flashbacks. critical of other musicians? Can you really uh, enjoy you know, it? I, yeah, I mean I love music, so mm -hmm. I have to enjoy it. I, you know I, I I love the when it's sincere music and when you know it's just not gimmicky. Uh, you know, I love it. I mean, that's my biggest dream right now is I work with young artists. You know, with, right. my, with my daughter, Colby, she's, she had this, she wrote this great song in our house um, over in Oxnard, not far from here. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then the label said, this is great. And, the, and then she, she became the digital queen with like 20 million followers. So the label said, we're sending you out on the road because it's 20 million people. That's, right. a, that's a sure jackpot for right. us. And so they made her go on the road without any. She had never been in, in really playing. Thank lines. God she had you to guide her. And, and I heard you gave her advice early on. I read that you said, uh, "Write your own music, or someone else is going to have to uh -huh. write it for you." Right. Mm. And you must give that up to every. Now everybody else knows that as well. Really I said, "If you do it, if you write your own music, you'll be in control. Mm -hmm. Right. Otherwise, you're going to be work, uh, hoping somebody else writes a song, and then hopefully it's, it's the perfect song." Imagine if Sting had to wait for every breath you take. For somebody else to write it, you right. know, it's like, it's only it was it was the thing that was going to come out of him. So if you teach her what you do, she's going to be well spread around, you know, knowing all her bases. She's, she's she is she's yeah oh, she she's is. there. I want to before we go to another clip. I just want to bring this up. This book has oh, been very successful, so great. making rumors. And uh, congratulations on the book, by the way. Thanks. And uh, give us a lowdown of. What, what someone will get from reading the book. Okay, well, you know, I'm, I'm always impressed with a big time record. You know, yeah, I've been, there's a few times in my life I've been doing a big time record and you kind of look around and go, wow, like, like here, you know, we're, mm -hmm. this is a big deal here. Right. And, and when you're a part of something bigger than you, it's like, this is great. So I wanted people to know that, that what it's like to make a hit record and, and it's not like you see on TV, there's actually the instruments are plugged into to, you know, microphones and things like that. But, mm -hmm. but also, it, this was a really heroic album. You know, this was really special for me. The, the first few days, I, the, I realized the whole, the, the bands were breaking up. And, and uh, then, I, then, then, I, then the, manage, the lawyers told Stevie that if we could make this record as good as the previous record, which is Fleetwood Mac, Fleetwood Mac, mm -hmm. they could be superstars. Stevie, up mm -hmm. till then, had said, she had been, she says uh, her favorite favorite saying was, "I don't want to be a cleaning lady anymore, you know, and oh, I don't right. want to be poor anymore." So she turned around to everybody and said, "Look, let's all agree that we're breaking up. Let's stop the yelling, let's stop the tears, and let's make this record because I don't want to be poor anymore, <laughs> you know." So, <laughs> great a true pro. And so it was like an, a great American thing, you know. Oh, exactly. She, th they just said, "Okay, we're gonna we're gonna keep our eye on the uh, you know donut and and uh, and make this record." And so. I tried, in, in my book, I tried to, I had the track sheets and I had all the dates and times, so I basically took the you guys through every single day, what it was like for me and my dog. I took my dog. <laughs> <laughs> it was you know, great. So great. me and my dog to, to go in this and make this record every single day and, you know, and what ha happened, what do you do the next day? Do you follow up? Do you shake hands? Do you high five? A lot of times it was, what do you want to do? And we didn't know what we wanted to do. So I wanted people to get the real feeling. Well, it's it. easy to see why it's a best was a bestseller. Yeah, you have another. I mean, you're so busy. You have a camp, Artist Max yeah. Camp, and we have a video. Let's go to the video, and then we can talk about it. Okay. It's, okay. Let's watch. I'll try not to hide from you. Artist Max is really about maximizing the artist in you. Unless you're somebody really unique, almost everybody needs a vocal coach. What you need to get a chance to write with great writers. My daughter, Colby, now writes with a lot of top writers. Having a voice wasn't everything her career needed. 
She needed to have confidence. She needed to have a style. She needed to know how to look at a camera. She needed to know how to talk to an audience. So Artist Max is, is an attempt to contain that whole uh, concept in one weekend. The uh, Artist Max will be held here at the world famous uh, Village Recording Studio. Uh, Steely Dan recorded here, Fleetwood Mac recorded here, Lady Gaga recorded here. We'll be using the big studio where actually Fleetwood Mac did their Tusk album. We'll be, that'll be one of the studios where Artist Max will be held. We'll be actually doing it also in the ballroom and in my studio, private studio upstairs. And uh, it's a great place to inspire these young kids to see the right stuff, what it takes. What we're looking for is the, the next best new artist. Uh, for next year's Grammy, so, and we want to help you get there. Submit your video to us, and uh, if you're accepted, you'll be attending one of our camps this summer. Do I lay down, pretend that I'm sleeping? That's a great idea. Great. I love, it. we need that in the skating world. That is brilliant. Brilliant. Everybody needs it, you know? Yeah. I mean, Tiger Woods but still needs tune-ups in his golf, you know? Uh, how to conduct an interview and what to say and what not to say. Well, when's the it's next perfect. Uh, camp? This is September uh, 18th, 19th, and 20th, and Colby okay. will be the guest star. She'll be critiquing singing and songwriters uh, um, and uh, songwriting styles, things like that. Now, would you, if, I'm sure this wasn't <laughs> around when Colby was starting, but would you have suggested to Colby to go? If Absolutely. She came to well, you. that's mm -hmm. when she started doing it. When the labels went all cuckoo and, and sent her out on the road, I and the label had to find people to help her because she was so, she was so nervous. If she was on stage, she'd go, "Thank you," and then she just yeah. like, and I'd be going, "Colbert, say thank you," you know, Santa Barbara, you know, <laughs> and how are you and, and talk, you know, I mean, that's be not personal. Easy. Right, right. No, but she was so nervous that she yeah. just, you know, and and I keep saying that. You know, having a great voice or having a great song isn't everything you need. Right. It's you, you just have to be likable, you know. You have to be on stage and you have to be an entertainer. It's like people have to really enjoy, oh, I hope this guy doesn't stop talking. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, there's no yeah. book that, te that teaches you that. So right. this is so you'd, awesome. So you'd be able to tell if somebody comes into this workshop, this camp, that this is a Grammy Award winner? You'd be able to know that? Oh. That you, at least they have a foundation <laughs> to be? I, I think if they have a great voice, and then I, a lot of times I have to work with them and say, "Listen, you guys, I mean, you have to f you have to learn where the camera is, learn how to look at it, learn what to wear, but all that stuff's fixable. It's easy, right? So, yeah. and I, it's not like I'm doing this. I just I know that for Colby, we went, we went and hired the best people, it's image image stylists and vocal coaches. They're all there. You know, right. it's it's exactly what happens at the front end of American Idol contestant wins an American Idol and they go through hair and makeup and they, they learn which camera to look at you know and, mm -hmm. and, and how to dress and how to, and fixing Prices. their hair, hairstyle and all that stuff. But my question so I'm just making I'm hiring these people and making them available to these okay but what so of, uh, is everything geared towards the young artist well, is, there yeah, is there be, an age limit is there for an age, what if there's a 60 year old okay. or a 50 year old who has the talent well then would they, <laughs> would they be welcome I would probably steer them more towards songwriting you know, because, uh, you know, I mean, if you're going to be, you're not going to go on tour as a 60-year-old. You're not going to break into the business. But you can make a very good career as a songwriter, writing commercials, jingles, or, or movie trailers. Well, you know, Alan Parsons, who was on the show uh, earlier. He's not bad. He, yeah. Pretty good. <laughs> no He's going to hear you say that. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, he was saying that uh, he goes on tour only because that's where the money is because with True, YouTube yeah. and all, he just doesn't, you know, no mm -hmm. one's making the money anymore. And the piracy going on and the, you know, nobody who, you know, buys right. CDs very often now. Right, that's the only place for the money, but, you know, if you're a beginning 60-year-old singer, you're probably not gonna have many people show up and you're probably gonna be playing at bars and, you know, so, but, but you could be a 60-year-old singer and songwriter and write the McDonald's hit. Sure. That's you true. know. Sure. And, and, or the, you know, the, like the, whoever wrote the Friends, you know, theme is very lucrative and very, very wealthy right now. Yeah. Right. Now, does everyone go to your camp thinking they're going to become stars? And do you have to, do you have I to hope tell, so. yeah, but do you have to tell yeah. them, um, you know, it's not going to happen? Are you the one telling them it's well, just not going to work? Never out? said that yet, you know. Really? Okay. I mean, I think there's always a possibility. And, and the biggest thing about being a, a success in the business is 
having a, a thick skin and, and just saying, you know what, Ken, yeah. I don't care what you say. You know, I'm going to be back here mm -hmm. in your face because I want this more than anything. Passion. If they don't want it more than anything, half the people, I'll give them some advice and, and I won't hear from them ever again. Well, because they go home and they go, oh, oh that's too much work. Well, we want you back. We want you yeah. back. <laughs> You're a delight. Thank you so very I went by too quickly. That's it? That's it. That's it. We and got that's it. in there, though. And, well, that's it Thanks, for the Ken. show tonight. So don't miss our <laughs> next show when Ty and I welcome the star from the very successful Buffy the Vampire Slayer movie, Christy Swanson. And again, that's actress Christy Swanson appearing on our next show. Okay, so for our guests, Ken Calais and Ty Babylonia, and for our director, George Montalvo, and the entire KBL crew, I'm Ken Boxer. Good night, everybody, and thank you all for being here. Thank you. Ken Boxer Live is brought to you by the following sponsors. American Riviera Bank. Smart banking for smart people. Palazzo Restaurant, where people don't leave hungry or thirsty. Harborview Inn, welcome to Santa Barbara's premier four diamond luxury boutique oceanfront hotel. Wendy Foster, Santa Barbara and Montecito's premier clothing store. The Eagle Inn, a family owned hotel near the beach in Santa Barbara. Via Rosa Inn, let us pamper you in international style. La Quinta Inn and Suites, conveniently located in downtown Santa Barbara. And by Taffy's Pizza, delivery, pickup, or dine in. Woody's Bodacious Barbecue, voted best barbecue in Santa Barbara for over 30 years. Santa Barbara Chicken Ranch, authentic Mexican style mesquite barbecue. Santa Barbara Bar, finally, nutritious tastes great. Country Catering, Meat Market, and Deli. Their food not only fills your plate, it nourishes the soul. Jack's Bagels and Bistro, serving the very best food in a friendly and relaxed atmosphere. Quality food and genuine drinks. Jill's Place, where the locals go to eat. Lido's Takeout, serving the best Mexican food for over 30 years. Sammy's Camera, new location at 530 State Street. Perfect computers since 1990. The Ken Boxer Live musical theme by Mr. Michael J. Leslie. From all of us at Ken Boxer Live, I'm Baron Ron Heron. Good night, everyone.